welcome to a special episode of Yarngasm. I'm Kristen and this is an FAQ, Frequently Asked Questions or Ask Me Anything episode, an episode where I answer your questions. And uh, if you are watching this, I am currently on vacation. Dennis and I are in Cape Cod, so I'm probably burning to a crisp on the beach, being dragged against my will by Dennis on a nature hike, or stuffing my face with lobster. But anyway, I hope you guys are having an amazing week. I didn't wanna leave you guys hanging without any video content to tide you over until my next normal, regular episode. Which, by the way, if you are a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new viewer, welcome to the podcast. Just a heads up, this is not the normal format of the podcast. Uh, so I do suggest that you maybe pause here and check out my last uploaded video the top of the screen, I'll link it in the doobly-doo up here. By the way, I just wanna say a quick thank you to everybody who asked me questions in the AMA thread, uh, which I opened up in the Yarngasm Ravelry group, which by the way, if you haven't joined, I highly recommend that you do. It's the place to be if you wanna join in on our knit-alongs, make-alongs, and stuff like this, Ask Me Anything episodes, which happens but once in a blue moon. But anyway, uh, without further ado, let's answer some questions. The first question is from Papa's Baby, and she wants to know, what is your favorite tubular cast-on? To be honest, I have not done many tubular cast-ons in my life. The last one that I remember doing was for the Stonecutter Pullover, a pattern by Michelle Wong, and I just remember it being pure genius. They are pretty brilliant, and I don't know why I don't do more tubular cast-ons. The second question is from Wizards, and she asks, You've mentioned tarot before. How did you get into it? And if you have more than one, do you have a favorite deck? So I actually got into tarot uh, by scrolling through my Instagram feed one day and I stumbled on a post from Caitlin French, who is F F French. <laughs> I'm totally butchering it, but I'll pop it in the doobly-doo down bar below. The deck that she posted was The Wild Unknown, and I just love, I fell in love with the imagery on the cards, the artwork, and I was just like, that seems so cool, and I want to learn more about it. And that was, essentially how I fell into learning more about tarot. Caitlin, if you're watching, you are amazing. Thank you for introducing that into my life. <laughs> but The Wild Unknown is still my favorite deck, and two others that I'm really enjoying is the Mooka Tarot, which is kind of a play on Art Nouveau, which is my favorite art style. The other deck that I really like is Dame Darcy's Mermaid Tarot. Uh, so if you are interested or curious about tarot, definitely check those out. I will post those in the show notes, by the way, uh, which you can find down in the description box below. Legally Knitting wants to know, what is your favorite or most special item that you have knit? That would have to be my wedding shawl. I didn't end up wearing my wedding shawl on my wedding day because it was it was June, it was hot, and there was absolutely no need for a shawl. But I really did enjoy the process of knitting a shawl that was special for my wedding. Um, it was knit out of Knit Picks Alpaca Cloud. <laughs> it was fully beaded and it was a pattern by Nancy Bush from her Knitted Lace of Estonia, and I believe it was the Madly Shawl. Uh, and yeah, that was a really big achievement for myself. I didn't get to wear it on my wedding day. It's still something special that I have that I keep that I just, it reminds me of the whole wedding planning process and that whole euphoric feeling that a woman feels before she's married, if that makes any sense. Ine wants to know, if you could be any animal, real or mythical, what would you be and why? I think everyone expects me to say unicorn because I do love me some unicorns and I do love me some mermaids, but right now, I kind of want to be a sloth, or a sloth, however you pronounce it. They just seem like they have the best lives ever. They take their time, they don't have anywhere to go, nowhere to be, nowhere to rush to. They just seem so happy and content being in the moment. And if I could be anything right now, I would, I would love to be a sloth. Knit Central asks, how long have you been sewing? You seem so confident sewing. So, <laughs> at this point, I think I've been sewing about three years. If I had to guess, I the, the years they just kind of blur together. But I'm still I still consider myself a newbie sewist. Not entirely green. I've come a long way, but I think I I have been sewing for about three years now. Nook Nick <laughs> Nook Knits asks, what is your favorite cast on for cuff down socks? Long tail cast on. She also wants to know how I block my shawls. I actually use interlocking foam mats to block my shawls using T-pins, so you can find those easily on Amazon for dirt cheap. Just search two by two, as in two by two feet, square interlocking foam mats, and a listing should pop up. But I think I purchased nine 
nine squares for about $19.99 US. So super cheap, you cannot go wrong with that. Dynamite Your Hue asks a couple of questions actually. <laughs> she asks, uh, on your drive up to Cape Cod, will you and Dennis be listening to music, podcasts, or an audiobook? So the way it usually goes is Dennis plays Radio Commando when we are driving pretty much anywhere. And fair enough, because he's the one doing the driving, I'm the one sitting in the passenger seat, knitting away, which is totally fine. Honestly, he's got really great taste in music. It's usually his Pandora station, and... If I had off the top of my head, we listen to music like uh, The Future Islands, Tame Impala, Flaming Lips, Arcade Fire, and some other stuff. But yeah, he, he definitely has really good taste in music, and if it wasn't for him, I'd just always be listening to ridiculous pop music and 80s music. And then Tommy also asks, uh, when you get there, is there a place you are excited to get food or drinks? Uh, yes, we love this place called Brock's Landing. Uh, it's, it's nothing special. It's always jam-packed during the summer and trying to get a table there is a nightmare. But we, for some reason, we just really like it. They have a really great view of a marina and it's just very romantic and they have a really great outdoor eating area. Um, and they have great drinks as well. And we also go to this place called Sestuit Harbor, uh, which is all outdoor eating. You have to wait on a pretty long line because they've gotten super popular, but it's totally worth the wait. Uh, you place your order and they give you your food and then you get a table. They're all picnic tables, but you have like a really nice view of the harbor. You get to see the boats coming and going and you get a really nice sunset. I remember we went out there with some friends and we actually shut the place down. <laughs> there were actually no lights out there because they want to get people out as quickly as possible before, you know, like after the sun sets. So, uh, but yeah, we were eating lobster in the dark and that was pretty fun. And there's also the lobster roll cruise which we try to do every year because it's it's essentially what it what it sounds like. It's a cruise where they feed you lobster. Enough said. Also, how come Bella is so freaking cute? Why'd you get so cute, baby? I don't know, you tell me. You tell me. DF3 wants to know, when buying online, how do I know if I'm choosing the right fabrics for my sewing projects? I always recommend ordering swatches because pretty much every online fabric store will ship you swatches for you to test out, sample, and whatnot. Uh, and the other way to do it is just trial and error. If you find a fabric that you like, order it. And if it's not suitable for your current project, you can always save it for your stash for when you're ready to use it. But yeah, definitely look into ordering swatches. She also asks, do you keep a record of your sewing projects, materials, tools on your blog or on a board on Pinterest, for example? I would say a little bit of both. Beach Blondie asks, you named your colorway Weep after Weeping Angels of Doctor Who. So, which doctor is your favorite? David Tennant, hands down. Katie8045 wants to know, what is your favorite book that you have read? I have read Akotar, as in A Court of Thorns and Roses, uh, series after you recommended it on the podcast and fell in love with them. Looking for some new books to read now. Jane Eyre. I think that is an ultimate classic. Everyone should read it and it's just my ultimate favorite book ever. Kathleen AC asks, how did you choose the name Volenvine? Thank you. I mentioned this a couple of times on the podcast, but Volenvine came about when I joined Ravelry, which was a while ago, I wanna say. But anyway, uh, I really stink at coming up with usernames and at the time I was just like, well, what do I like? I like I like wool, and I like wine, wool and wine, German, put a German spin on it, and you have Wollenwein. So, you know, throw back to my German heritage, fast forward to my love of wool and wine, and you have, you have yourself a, a username that makes absolutely no sense. Auntie Knits A Lot asks, do you want to learn another craft like hand quilting, machine quilting, or cross stitching, or are you happy with knitting and sewing? I'm kind of guessing you're a new viewer, but I like to dabble in all the things. <laughs> I have tried quilting, really wasn't for me. Lately I've been getting into weaving. Uh, I have been doing hand stitch embroidery. Cross stitch I enjoy not as much, but it's something that I do dabble in as well. I am interested in getting back into painting, which is something I have not done for years and years and years, but I have an easel sitting in the corner with some canvases, can buy canvases, canvas, and some oil paints and some 
some brushes ready to go at, at the ready and ready to go at the ready. I cannot talk today, guys. So there's a lot of things that I really enjoy doing aside from knitting and sewing. Torrendelia, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, wants to know, uh, I'm planning a trip to New York City in the near future from New Zealand. Hi! It will be my first time there, so my questions are, what yarn shops do you recommend I visit? Brooklyn General, Woolen, and String Thing Studio, all in Brooklyn. Highly recommend. She also wants to know if there are any retail stores where she can purchase my yarn from. She also also wants to know, what are your top must visit places for a visitor in New York? I would say the High Line, the Metropolitan Museum, Central Park, definitely walking across the Brooklyn Bridge. And another cool thing that you can do is take the East River water taxi. You get a really awesome view of the bridges and the skylines in Manhattan and just, you know, a fun, cheap, way to see the city from a different perspective. Both Darb Darb and Amy Jo Yarn Brew want to know, what, what's what's this pink color right here? It is mauve. It's, it's mauve, my favorite color in the whole wide world that I'm obsessed with. But uh, if you are curious about what color this is, it is, it's Victoriana by Benjamin Moore. Caroline wants to know, how do you see yourself and your business in five years, 10 years? Oh wow, I can't even think about tomorrow. I really can't answer that. I hope that I'm still doing what I love to do and I hope I'm still knitting at least. <laughs> uh, I hope to be traveling more. I hope to uh, be going to more international yarn festivals, meeting new and exciting people in the knitting community and you know, I'm, I'm just so excited to see where knitting takes me. Not Knitting Around says, I really love your music intro for your podcast. The only thing wrong with it is that it's not longer. Did you record that bit of fabulousness? <laughs> what, what's the story behind it? So yeah, the, the intro music that I use for my podcast is royalty-free music that I purchased from audiojungle.com. So you pay for a standard license and you can use it for your podcast or however you'd like commercially. Commercially, commercially, commercially. WorldPeas00 on YouTube wants to know, uh, where is your favorite place to purchase fabric from? What about any favorite sewing patterns? So I more often than not just purchase fabric from fabric.com and other various online shops. There's Fabric Depot, there's HawthorneThreads.com, uh, but mainly fabric.com. One, because I'm lazy, I never leave the house, and <laughs> it's just easy. Um, but in person, uh, I really do enjoy going to Brooklyn General. It's totally worth the trip. They have a really beautiful fabric selection there, and uh, I highly recommend that you check them out. As far as favorite sewing patterns is concerned, I really love the Anna dress by By Hand London, the Q dress by Nina Lee patterns, the Ogden cami, which I'm currently wearing, uh, which is by True Bias Patterns, and my ultimate favorite that I cannot seem to get enough of is the lady skater dress pattern. And I just love throwing it over a pair of leggings. Uh, and that is a pattern by Kitchy Koo Patterns. Third Fuller Fibers asks, where do you go on the Cape? I used to live there when I was a kid and want to plan a trip back as an adult. Any cool spots, knitting or otherwise to check out? So I answered a couple of those questions earlier. However, as far as knitting shops are concerned, I really do love P-Town Pearl, which is in Provincetown. It's a tiny but mighty shop and the owner, Brian, is adorable. So if you do find yourself there, please do go in and say hello. Then there's also a great yarn in Chatham and they have a lot of great as the name suggests, a lot of great yarns. Uh, so, And the owners are really adorable as well. Definitely go check them out if you are in the area. And there's a new shop that just opened up. I think it's called Saltwater Yarns. I could be mistaken. I don't have the name in front of me, but I will of course post all the links to these shops in the description box below. So definitely check that out. And to answer your first question, uh, Dennis and I usually stay in Harwich. Hodges00 wants to know, how did you get into dyeing? So I got into dyeing through watching the Dyer's Notebook podcast hosted by my friend Lara. She did a couple of tutorials on hand dyeing yarn and I was completely inspired. And I remember taking a skein of yarn with the colors that I wasn't too crazy about. And I basically tried some food coloring, got some vinegar and watched a couple more YouTube tutorials on dyeing with uh, food coloring and vinegar. And the end product was nothing to write home about, but just the whole process of dyeing yarn was something that I 
fell completely in love with. So I purchased a whole bunch of undyed skeins from Knit Picks. Uh, they do offer all their bases in undyed form. So, you know, I just stocked up on, on them and I just, I went to town and I eventually I graduated to acid dyes and you know, the rest, long story short, the rest is history. Uh, Will and Vine Yarns was born and here we are today. <laughs> AG Ziller wants to know, what are your favorite shoes to wear with hand-knit socks? Honestly, I just wear combat boots. And our last question is from Double Cat Espresso, or Double Cat Espresso, and she wants to know, uh, since I have been a fan of your podcast for many years, thank you, I would love to know if you have any suggestions for increasing the visibility of your podcast and producing a podcast that a lot of people enjoy watching. I'm often quite discouraged because I sometimes doubt it is worth investing so much time and energy in producing a podcast that doesn't even seem to feel, if it doesn't seem like my audience is growing. Um, I totally understand how you feel. I actually just recorded and published a new audio podcast over on strangebrewcreative.com, uh, very first episode actually. My friends and I, we actually chat about this exact topic, so if you are curious, head on over there. We give a lot of great tips, uh, but just since you are watching right now, I will, uh, and other people are probably wondering as well, I will give a couple of blanket tips. I know a lot of people get discouraged when they first start podcasting because they feel like they're just talking to themselves. And I think it's important to mention that you are not gonna gain a viewership overnight. You're not gonna gain them after a week. You're not gonna gain them after a month or even, even in some cases, a year. Um, I have been podcasting for about eight or nine years so far and it took me a really long time to gain a decent following. Um, I think what's important for you to keep in mind or anyone wanting to start a, a knitting podcast or any podcast for that matter, is to do it because you enjoy doing it. Do not worry about numbers, the numbers will come. They see that you enjoy podcasting, they see that you get excited about knitting or whatever it is you're podcasting about. Um, that is how people will want to tune in on a regular basis. When I started podcasting, it was just something that I looked forward to every week. It was my my time to just talk about knitting and also uh, partake in the conversation. So if there are other podcasts that you follow, comment in their Ravelry groups on, on their YouTube channel. Um, you know, don't just say, hey, I'm so-and-so, I started a podcast, will you give it a watch? If they see that you're constantly engaging in conversation and contributing and adding value to what you say on social media, uh, they're gonna wanna know more about you. Again, it's not gonna happen overnight, but if you stick with it and you're having fun with it, uh, that is what's most important. Just be very patient, um, be yourself, and do it because it's fun and you enjoy it, and the rest will follow. Again, I think that is another topic for another episode where I can dive more in depth. If that's something that you want me to talk about on the podcast or anything else, uh, let me know in the comments below and I would be happy to indulge you guys. So that said, I'm gonna end things there. Thank you so much again for tuning into this uh, special bonus episode of Yarngasm. I will be back next week with a regular episode. Uh, if you would like to follow me on social media, I am most active on Instagram where I am at Volenvine, that's V-O-O-L-E-N-V-I-N-E, -E. and we have, it would not be an episode without Motorcycle Guy, so he's back, he's back in town, guys. Um, and yes, show notes for this episode can be found in the description box below. I feel like that's a more convenient place to post show notes. Uh, you know, let me, let me know what you guys think. And if you enjoyed this episode, please like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Happy knitting, bye.